Hi everyone, my name is Chris. I'm a medical student working with Dr. Derek Wan in the Hagee lab, and I'm excited to be presenting some of our recent findings. So previous experiments in the lab have shown that deferoxamine, the iron chelator, is effective as a, a treatment for radiation-induced fibrosis of the skin. Um, and deferoxamine is beneficial for two reasons. One, it upregulates angiogenesis, thereby creating a more healing forward local environment. And two, it decreases oxidative stress by limiting reactive oxygen species production. And that's kind of what we focused on here. Um, so we irradiated the dorsal skin of nude mice. Uh, they received 30 gray fractionated into six sessions of five gray. And we treated them with deferoxamine, um, either as a, a transdermal patch or a direct injection. And we, we really wanted to see which was more effective, the patch or the injection. So we did a stain for, for free iron in the dermis, um, non-heme bound iron. And you can see here, where did my mouse go? You can see here that normal skin and irradiated control skin don't really have much of a difference in their iron content, but deferoxamine, both the patch and the injection, were effective at chelating that free iron, um, patch more so than injection. So what does this mean for oxidative stress? We looked at a, a couple markers. So first, figure two, we looked at 8-isoprostane. Um, that's a, an arachidonic acid metabolite, and it's actually a, an isoform of the naturally occurring prostaglandin F2 alpha. Um, so when tissues undergo oxidative stress, um, this staining will increase. Um, so if you look at these pictures here, it's a little hard to see, but the green immunofluorescence is the 8-isoprostane. So compared to normal skin, radiated control skin had a much higher level of 8-isoprostane. The defroxamine treatment, both groups were effective at decreasing this staining, the lipid peroxidation, and the, the patch was, again, more effective than the injection. So another thing we looked at is the antioxidant enzyme glutathione. Um, it's going to exist in two forms, either its active reduced state or its already used up oxidized um, disulfide state. So the ratio of oxidized to reduced is indicative of intracellular oxidative stress. Um, so if you look at figure three, normal skin, the ratio is pretty low. There's plenty of reduced glutathione and not much of it has been used up compared to the irradiated control skin where you see a much higher ratio of oxidized to reduced. And as you can see, um, defroxamine treatment, both the patch and injection decreased this ratio um, the patch much more so than the injection. And lastly, we looked at um, Bax protein. That's BCL2 associated X protein. It's a, uh, an apoptotic activator. Um, so in normal skin, in healthy tissues, you're gonna have low levels. And in irradiated tissues, you have high levels because there's high levels of apoptosis. Um, so defroxamine on this right chart here, decreased Bax levels. Um, both the patch and the injection did. Again, the patch was more effective. So looking at all these markers together, we can conclude that, yes, defroxamine did decrease reactive oxygen species production, and that's why it decreases oxidative stress. Um, this mechanism, like we said, is in part responsible for DFO's, defroxamine's um, antifibrotic effect, and the patch uh, was more effective than a direct injection. So, Couple of reasons why that may have been the case. Um, repetitive tissue injury, like in the case of these needle sticks, is counterproductive to wound healing, um, causes local inflammation, thus uh, reactive oxygen species production. Also the patch, um, when it's placed on, it elutes DFO into the dermis in a more sustained fashion compared to the injection, which was um, you know, once daily, and it, was, it, it makes for an episodic dosing regimen. Defroxamine's half-life is on the order of hours. So by the afternoon, if they got injected in the morning, um, most of that defroxamine is probably gone. Um, so future directions. First, mouse skin is very different from human skin, and um, that limits the translational value of this study. Um, doing this in a, a large animal model like a, like a pig would be helpful. And also, we know that this reverse micelle patch 
allows DFO to to penetrate the, the stratum corneum, the hydrophobic layer of the epidermis. Um, but we don't know the extent that it's allowing DFO to penetrate intracellularly. Um, and you know, mitochondrial lysosomal ROS production, that's that's where most of endogenous ROS production occurs in the cell. Um, so if you could investigate that, that would be very helpful. Um, so yeah, that's it for me. Big thank you to Dr. Wan and also to Dr. Gertner and Dr. Longacre. And thank you for listening.